The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, I'm Steve for Botest.com, and everybody thinks I've got the coolest job in town. Well, this time, they may be right. Today, I'm going to be testing the Oceancraft 9.5 meter interdiction boat, and it's powered by twin Evan 300 horsepower ETEX. Let's check it out. Well, the model name is 9.5 meter, but the technical name is Vessel Interdiction and Boarding Team Delivery, or VI TAC BTD. The layout is specific to fast interception and getting out to the critical area and embarking a boarding team for takedown. This particular model is powered by a pair of Evinrude E-Tech G2300s, so let's start by getting around the water and see how she goes. Oceancraft Marine specified the Evinrudes for this application because they needed to have an engine that was fuel efficient and trouble free. Because the Evinrude E-Tech G2300s have over 100 fewer parts than four-stroke engines, not only were they lighter, but they also simply have fewer things to go wrong during rough and tumble operations, and they're warrantied for five years or 500 hours. Reliability needs to be key in this sort of an application, and the G2300s deliver. All cylinders are fed by direct in-cylinder fuel injection. That means that fuel is delivered inside the combustion chamber rather than in the intake manifold, resulting in more accurate fuel delivery. The lower unit is streamlined and has larger gears and bearings for increased durability, it also allows for larger props and therefore more thrust. With the twin 300s rev up to 5,900 RPM, we topped out at 55 miles per hour. Best crews came in at 3,500 RPM and 28.6 miles per hour. That speed showed a fuel burn of 13.4 gallons per hour and a range of 385 miles. That allows for a long offshore trip to catch the bad guys or in some cases to be dropped from a cargo plane for the chase down. The boat has a fiberglass hull with concave reverse chines that Oceancraft said helped the boat turn as well as it does. At wide open, we cranked the wheel hard over and she turned like a Formula One tunnel. It was downright impressive and that's why each seat has a four-point harness system. If you were to do anything that, due to conditions or speed, the boat can't handle, she'll just bleed off speed rather than surprise you. In rough water, the tubes and suspension system help cushion the ride on re-entry and we barely felt impacts when going over big cruiser wakes because of the shock mitigation suspension. Of course, a lot of what this boat does has to do with the features that allow it to complete its mission. Let's take a look. Let's start where the action is, at the console. First of all, the wheel is mounted to a telescopic and tilt mount. The steering is fully adjustable for resistance, or lack of it, from Evnerd's screen. Flip-down armrests allow for more precision from the engine controls. Now, this is all about division of labor. The driver drives, the right seat is all about the situational awareness and navigation. Let's take a look. There's an AIS 300 vessel identification system, and it's receive only. The typical customer for this boat doesn't tend to transmit its operational parameters. It's more see but don't be seen. Of course, there's also thermal imagery for night interdiction. That makes this an all-weather boat, and being dark colored doesn't hurt. The rear-facing camera eliminates the need for the crew to turn around and check on the team. Wireless headsets can be linked to the vessel's comm system, so we're still talking to the boarding team after they've left the boat, and those guys can communicate directly with the CO even while still aboard the target vessel. Overhead are the main switches, and to both sides, inward means on. If a circuit blows, the switch is out. In resets it. Same concept with the lower panel. And because all this action is likely to take place in hellacious conditions, the entire console is mounted to a free-floating, three-axis, independent suspension. It's also progressive. The more you demand, the stiffer it becomes. So the operator's not getting bounced separate of the console and hands can stay on the controls or switch panels as needed. The aft seats are where the boarding team is and these are also fully shock absorbent. Plus, they flip up and out of the way when the target boat is reached to provide more room for high speed boarding while those still aboard can provide cover fire. Even the tops of the tubes are designed to support this mission. The front of the console opens fully for servicing and upgrading components, along with changing out the wireless batteries, of course. And even the overhead mast is hinged so that the boat can be transported easier. Now, there are several versions of this boat. A fire boat, for example, will have pumps and hoses, heart defibrillators, etc. This one, strictly for law enforcement, whether local or government. It's designed to get the job done, and from what I've seen, it's well suited. And that's just based on what we were allowed to show you. No doubt I've done some cool stuff for boat tests, but this tops the list. My test of the Oceancraft Marine 9.5 meter. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.